advertising tool. So Miller American cruising along again, a beautiful shot. With our As the old saying goes, speed costs money. How fast can you afford to go? Sponsors pay a lot of money to do the races. Miller Brewing Company won't say what it spends, but John Walters, crew chief for the Miller American, estimates a top-line boat costs up to $250,000, turbine engines up to $60,000 apiece, plus a shop, crew, insurance, tools, transportation. That's a million dollars or more startup, and up to $750,000 a year to keep competing. To sponsor a competitive, not necessarily winning boat locally, expect to spend anywhere from $5,000 to $200,000. Prize money doesn't come near to covering the cost of racing. The attraction is name recognition, and it's all tax deductible. Hydroplane racing is really the only thing that you can really sponsor where they refer to what you're racing as the Kawaguchi Travel Service as opposed to, Mar as opposed to Mario Andretti. Gatchers managed the Kawaguchi Travel Service boat from 1980 to 85. It never won a race, but people began to know Kawaguchi. We had people going out calling on businesses, and one of the things in order to get somebody to let you in the door is they have to know who you are. And you'd say Kawaguchi, and they'd say, oh yeah, you guys had the hydroplane. But racing Local is businessman totally and broadcast personality Pat O'Day will call this year's race for the 20th straight year. He sponsored the Miss KYYX in the early 80s and knows the value of name recognition. What a statement it made for Atlas Van Lines. A statement of involvement, a statement of excellence, uh, a statement of a company that uh, isn't just moving vans, it's a company with a soul that likes to participate and likes to win. National and local sponsors are apparently putting their money to good use. According to an Indiana marketing survey, the average Hydro fan is 18 to 35 years old, married, has a high school education, some college, and earns about $28,000. These are the people sponsors believe will buy beer, potato chips, and a lot of other things. It's not a message where you say, what are they trying to sell me? It's not a message. It's a message of it's in your mind, and uh, people make decisions at the point of purchase for a myriad of reasons. Uh, and uh, one of those important reasons is familiarity with the label, with the brand, and saying, where do they come from? Well, you know they are of sufficient substance to participate in hydroplane racing, so it must be a good company. It but the millions spent by Miller and Budweiser on speedy turbine engines may threaten this marketing tool. Turbine engine boats overwhelmingly beat out piston engine boats, and thus the races are less competitive. Read that boring, a turnoff to potential consumers. There's been talk of creating two divisions for the different types of unlimited racing engines. I think if they had separated the high, high budget boats from the low budget boats, we probably wouldn't have been interested in doing it because one of the reasons we got in it is it got us associated with the people who were the best in what they did. Um, and if we were in some other class, it'd be like, you aren't as good. And what we wanted to do was be associated with the, with the big buck people. Yes, the Budweiser's, the Miller Americans, they do overpower the sport, uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. They can be running against one another, while another vi division of, uh, of lesser speeds, if you will, and lower budget boats, again, compete one with another, and you'd have winners and national championships in their division. But that can be so easily overcome, and uh, that will be overcome before the sport suffers, uh, uh, suffers terminally from it. But right